All right, so we are officially live on both groups. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Good, good morning on the phone. Good morning in the group. Um, both groups. All right, we are officially live. Um, let me press record and we can get this party started. Conference recording started. Hello, 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 everybody. Good morning uh, to the women in the spotlight going global. Friday morning prayer call. I am your host and facilitator this morning, Deetra Trueheart. And um, I'm actually super excited just about this topic um, and just super excited about the fact that we are in the midst of um, transition. Um, I don't know about you, but I feel like I'm in transition, that there is <clears throat> a lot happening. Um, for those of you who had an opportunity, specifically those locally in the Buffalo, uh, Western New York area, who had an opportunity to um, go to the holiday party last, um, this past Monday, um, hopefully you had a good time. Um, I was able to, I wasn't able to attend, but I was able to pop in and just give hugs and see some of my faves um, who were there. And it really was good for me just to be in um, a space with good people that I know and to kind of fill my hug tank. If you know anything about me, I love hugs. I love giving hugs, but I also love receiving hugs. And so at any rate, um, we're talking about rebuilding. Um, this month we're talking about uh, the title for this month's topic is It's Time to rebuild. It's time to rebuild. And so I'm not going to be before you long. I just want to drop a few nuggets to um, kind of help you reflect on a couple of things. And um, I'm actually um, going to come from Ecclesiastes 3 and 1 and 3 and 3. And so Ecclesiastes 3 and 1 says, to everything, there is a season and a time for every purpose under the heaven Ecclesiastes 3.3, 3, um, the second portion of it um, says a time to break down and a time to build up. And um, what I really want to talk about is the process of rebuilding. And I don't have a lot of time to break this down, but one of the things that I did when I was um, preparing for this um, and I didn't have a lot of time um, just because there's kind of a lot going on um, in my life right now. And so I really have just been good morning, everybody. Hey, Naisha. Hey, um, Pastor Jay. How are you? Good morning, everybody. I see you guys still popping in on the call. Um, and so really not having the time that I really want to prepare. Um, I did some research on um, rebuilding a house, right? When you, If you want to rebuild a house. And so most of the questions that came up was, should I demolish um, and rebuild or should I renovate? Should I demolish and rebuild or should I renovate? And um, I, I believe that we are in a space um, of we have spent a lot of time renovating. And for many of us, it is time to rebuild, meaning from scratch, meaning that you have to delimit, uh, demolish some things. Um, good morning, everybody. I see you guys popping in. Um, you know, that there are some things that are that you need to basically start over. Um, you don't want to just, you know, kind of renovate it and or even to the extent of, you know, kind of gutting it out um, and just kind of working with the framework. For many of you, um, rebuilding, um, I looked up the word rebuilding and it is a prefix and it says occurring originally um, in loan words from Latin um, used with the meaning again or again and again to indicate repetition or with the meaning back or backward to indicate withdrawal or a backward motion like to regenerate or to refurbish or to retype and so for us we're not renovating um, we are rebuilding and um, what I love about this is the idea um, that we can start over, the idea that um, that there is a time not only to break down, but there is a time to build up. And so if we understand that there is a time to break down, um, for many of us, um, and, and I've said this, and, and there have been many of others who have said that you can't have a breakthrough if you don't have the breakdown, right? If there is no breaking, there cannot be a breakthrough. And so for many of us, we want to build, but there hasn't been a breakthrough 
breaking down. We want to build, but there hasn't been a demolishing. We want to build, but, and for some of us, there has been a breaking, not really on our part, but on God's part, right? And so um, I really want to encourage you, specifically when we look at the word um, build, meaning to form by ordering or um, uniting, um, materials by the graduate process, the gradual means into a composite whole to construct, right? To construct something, to cause something to be constructed, um, to develop according to a systemic plan by a definite process or on a particular base. And so when I think about building a building or building a house or building something that you have to create a solid foundation, one of the things that I learned years ago from T.D. Jakes, um, who's probably my favorite pastor um, of all time, um, I have lots of favorite pastors, but when we talk about consistently, like if you ask my husband, like who my favorite is, he will probably tell you T.D. Jakes. Like I've been with T.D. Jakes, the fat T.D. Jakes, the skinny T.D. Jakes, uh, the, like just whatever. And I remember a long time ago, he mentioned that when um, when contractors are building a building, specifically skyscrapers, like the higher the building, the deeper the foundation. The higher the building, the deeper the foundation. And so for many of us, we want to build on on shallow foundation. We want to build high, but we don't want to um, dig low, right? We, we don't want to technically do the work. And so I think it is important um, for us to understand that, and there's a couple of things that you're going to hear me say that you have probably heard me say if you have seen me at any time for multiple times, that you cannot fix what you won't face. And so when we talk about that it is a time to rebuild, you have to be um, in the mindset of of acknowledging that where you are now um, is not where you're going to stay. That where you are now, that the process, the process of rebuilding starts now, but it also acknowledges that there are some things that have to be torn down, that there are some things that have to be demolished, that there are some things that cannot go into 2019 that you have to leave in 2018, that there are some things that you cannot fix if you don't face it, that you can't build um, on something that's already, you got to knock it all the way down. And when I mean knock it all the way down, you got to get to the crux of what really going on. So when we talk about fixing finances and fixing our faith and fixing our lives and, you know, girl, I got to get my life right. And, you know, we talk about Yala fix my life, all of those things. Um, you cannot conquer what you don't confront and you can't confront what you don't identify and acknowledge. And so the first part of rebuild building and, um, I went to a website and one of the things that it talked about, there were a number of things that they looked at, but, um, let me just see if I can find it really quickly. Um, cause I pulled it up. Um, but it talked about one of the major things that you wanted to do, um, is you want to do a full inspection, right? You want to do a full inspection. And so we get excited about rebuilding, right? I'm going to rebuild. I'm going to get myself together. I'm going to get my credit together, get my house together. I'm going to get my business together. I'm rebuilding. I'm rebranding. I'm re whatever, right? Are you doing the inspection? Are you taking stock of, of what, what is going on around you? Like, first of all, doing this, one of the things they say is before you build and before you renovate, have somebody come out to inspect it. My question to you is, and my challenge to you is, before you start getting moving with where it says a time to build, before there is a time to build, there is a time to break down. And so understand that before you can rebuild, right? So we're talking about again and again, meaning that it can happen over and over, that there can be a process of rebuilding, right? You can, if you knock it down, you can build it back up, right? And so I think what you need to do, this is one of the first things that you need to do is, is you need to inspect the space. You need to inspect the situation. You you need to inspect the surroundings. You need to inspect the people around you. You need to inspect. You need to inspect some things. There has to be an inspection. There's got an inspection. If you know anything about an inspection, they go in and they're checking everything out. They're making sure that there are no electronic issues. There are um, electric issues. They're making sure that you know there's no asbestos. There's no. Um, there's no. Um, you know, mold, they're making sure like all of that kind of stuff, like whether you knock it down um, or whether you're getting ready to, to, to just kind of gut it out, inspect your space. What do I mean by inspecting your space? What, what is going on around you? Like, are there some moldy people and some things around you, right? Are there some people, places, and things that, that technically you've been holding on to that you need, it's, it's time to let go of? right? Um, do you have, is your, is your foundation solid? 
Do you need to go back and and, and create a, a, a an even solid, more solid foundation on what you are going to be building on? What what are do you have clarity about what you're building? Do you even know what you're building? Right? We want to get to the process of oh girl, I'm about to rebuild. I'm about to get myself together. I'm about to get my life. Why are you getting your life together? Why are you why are you rebuilding? What's the purpose behind that? Make the inspection. Make the inspection. Face what you're about to fix. Is it, you know, so you want to rebuild, you know, your credit, but have you identified that the reason why you're trying to rebuild your credit is because you have bad spending habits? You want to get your business together, but the reality is, is that you need some skills in order to make sure that what you are building is solid, that you've got solid people around you. And so I think it is important um, for us to be in a space where we are inspecting our space before we get so excited about building that we acknowledge the fact that there are some things that not only we have to break down, but that we have to be in the mindset of looking around. Don't just knock stuff down and not inspect your space. Don't get so excited about the idea of rebuilding, right? We get excited about rebuilding, but we don't get excited about the process of rebuilding, right? We get excited. So let me, oh God, thank you. So we just renovated our bathroom um, not too long ago. Um, and one of the things that we realized going in, we were all excited about this bathroom. We were all excited um, until we realized that there were some other things that were wrong, right? When we were all excited about that, right? We get excited about the end game, right? We get excited about like, I'm about to get myself together. I'm about to, but the question is, is are you willing to do the work? Are you willing to inspect the space? Are you willing to, um, remove, remove some things from the space that no longer need to be in your space as you begin to build, You can, there are some people who are not going to go into 2019 who you have to leave in 2018. There are some habits that cannot go into 2019. I don't care how you rebuild this thing. If you continue to take the same habits and the same perspective, right? You, the same stinking thing. Like there are some things. And here's the other part is, is that it is a process. It is not an overnight thing. And so the one thing that I also realize is um, change is a process. And so for many of us, we get so caught up in the rebuilding. We get so caught up in um, the process of, you know, I'm getting ready to rebuild. I'm getting ready to get this together that we forget that there is a work to do in the breaking down. There is a work to do in the process of rebuilding. There is time that it takes. And so although there may be things that you are not no longer taking into 29, the one thing that you don't want to go into 29 being is naive. You don't want to go into 2019 being naive about the process that it takes in order to rebuild. The process that it takes, because let me just tell you, and these are some things that I have learned um, just through personal, good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody joining um, live on both groups and even on the call, is, is that um, many times, you know, we get excited about change, but we don't get excited about what it takes to change, the process of change and the time that it takes. And so when it says to everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven, just as great as there is a time for you to rebuild and you to reap the benefits of change, there is a time to the process of change. And sometimes it might take you a year um, of setting a foundation and and even gutting some, maybe even before you set the foundation, gutting some things out before you lay the foundation. Because once you lay the foundation, you don't want cracky people. You don't want to be around cracky spaces. You don't want to be around cracky, be in cracky environments. You don't want your foundation to be cracked. And so sometimes you have to gut some stuff out in order to make sure that your foundation is solid in what you are getting ready to create. 
And part of that, again, is the breaking down. Before you build up, there is a breaking down. Before you rebuild, there is a tearing down, right? And so I'm rebuilding it. Why am I rebuilding it? Because there was a breaking somewhere. There was a shattering somewhere. There was a crack in my foundation, so I have to start over. And so part of that is acknowledging where the crack happened. Was it your fault? Are you the reason why there was a, a crack in your situation? Where Are you the reason why um, things are a little faulty and a little shaky and a little moldy because you didn't take care? Are you the reason why things are there, right? Take part in it. You cannot fix what you don't face. And sometimes it means facing you. Sometimes it's not other people. Sometimes it is not other things. It is certain decisions that you made that you have to get to a space that you acknowledge. And so change takes time. Rebuilding takes time. Do not get caught up in highlight reels and do not get caught up in, you know, somebody else's chapter and somebody else's book and somebody else's race and all of We have our own race to run. Do not get caught up in all of that stuff, missing the fact that re rebuilding is a process and it takes time. And so while you are leaving some things behind, the other process of, of creating a new space for new things also takes time. And you cannot have a building without a breaking. I'm going to say that in. You cannot have a building without a breaking. And, and, the, and here's what is the hardest thing is when you have to do the breaking yourself, when you have to demolish what you created and you have to start over because what you built was not necessarily what you wanted. It didn't turn out the way you expected or you or there were certain things that kind of came into play that it didn't necessarily work out how it how it how it was supposed to work out it didn't work out and so now what what you have to you had to break it down like it wasn't god didn't do the breaking um you had to demolish the thing that you built because you wanted to create something different when people decide to rebuild a house right they decide well i'm going to knock this down like there's something it like there's something wrong with it and maybe it's not something wrong with it but maybe they want to add on to it and they realize in order to add on to it it's cheaper to knock it down as opposed to just adding on to it right and so I need you to understand that sometimes you have to break your own things down. Sometimes you have to demolish your own things. Sometimes you have to take a step away, rebrand, rebuild, right? Replenish, refuel so that you can position yourself to, to rebuild, right? Do not get caught up in trying to do something that takes time doing it overnight. Do not get caught up in trying to do something that takes time and do it overnight. Because guess what? You're going to have to do it again. How many times have we rushed the process? What happens when you rush the process of baking a cake? It don't come out right. What happens when you rush the process of um, removing um, ingredients in a cake or in something that you are baking, it doesn't come out right. And so sometimes it is, and let me just tell you, thank you, Lord, there is nothing wrong with starting over. There is nothing wrong with you. There is nothing wrong with the situation. And take responsibility during the process. Absolutely. There's whoever I'm talking to, there is nothing wrong with starting over. Somewhere along the lines, we feel like, well, something had to happen. Like, well, why they, you know, so and so? I thought thought it was going good, or well, I thought it was whatever. Who cares what what other people think? Sometimes starting over is just like it's kind of like you messed the cake up. I got to start over. I missed. There was an ingredient, and let me. Oh, okay, so I gotta go. Um, so some of you have heard this cause I've talked about this on my, um, the hurt comes from the emotional investment that took place during the building process. Most times it's the emotional devastation, um, more the actual work than we put in. That's part of the process though, Jakima. Like I'm not talking about, and I'm thank, thank you for saying that 
the, the, the actual process of rebuilding is a holistic process. It is not just a physical process of rebuilding. There is an emotional problem. When we talk about you won't fix what you won't face, that's not a physical, that is an emotional, psychological, mental thing to be able to look yourself in the face and say, I messed up real bad on this one. This is a holistic process. This is not a just, oh, I'm just going to tear it. Tearing down is huge because you got to look at yourself in the face and you got you have to emotionally, right? Not just physically, emotionally say this did not go the way I wanted it to go. And you fit. And this is why I'm saying it is okay with starting over because some of you emotionally, right? Not physically, like emotionally you are in a space where you are now carrying a space a title of failure when just because you failed doesn't make you a failure just because it doesn't work out that, that that doesn't dictate who you are you will start over a number of times which segues thank you jakima right into what i was getting ready to share about i've made some sweet potato pies y'all might have heard about my sweet potato pies and then i'm gonna close out i'm gonna pray and then i'm gonna close out um I decided that my husband loves sweet potato pies. And so I decided that I wanted to get into a space of really creating, like I have a little hand mixer. And so I wanted to start making pies. And so I went out, um, this was the weekend before Thanksgiving. I went out, got some sweet potatoes, uh, some yams, and I made some pies. And so um, the first batch of pies, like they came out really well. They taste good. But the 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 um, the top was still a little brown. Like I'm like, why is it brown? Like it was brown on top, but it still wasn't cooking on the inside. Like I could tell it was still mushy. So I booked, I, I made the first two. Then I made some more. And by the third batch, now y'all listen to what I'm saying here. By the third batch of two, I made two, two, and two. It was at the second, after the second batch, I realized um, that my pies were too high up in the oven. And so I had to put them down a little bit lower. And so by the third batch, they came out a whole lot, but I still haven't perfected it, right? But after six pies, process y'all, I realized, and so for some of you, which is why we, it is called, it is time, not time to build, but time to rebuild and understanding that the prefix re means again and again that there is there is repetition here. And so there are some things that don't get caught up in the idea that you only have to do it once to figure it out. Right. There are some things that you will have to keep doing. Now, I'm not saying don't keep jacking your finances up. Don't keep. um you know, don't keep mess, you know, getting in, you know, these ch crazy relationships with, and I'm not even talking about dating, but just in general, get hooked up with crazy folks. Like, you know, that's not necessarily what I'm talking about. What I am talking about is the process, right? The process of creation, the process of as you are breaking down and as you are creating and as you are developing, that there will be a time, right? That for me, I have to do this thing over and over again until I can perfect the process of making my sweet potato pies. And so when we talk about a time to rebuild again and again, that sometimes you have to go backward to go forward, don't be afraid to take a step away, to take a step backwards so that you can take a step forward. And don't be afraid of what other people are going to say, especially people who ain't doing nothing anyway. Right? People who are on the sidelines and who are not even on the in 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 on on the uh, the track, they not running, but they got a whole lot to say. People who are not in the game but are on the sidelines and they want to be coaching the game from the sidelines. Stop listening to those people. People who are not taking time to build, who have not built anything, stop talking to them. Stop listening to them. Stop telling them what you're doing. When it and this is the last thing that I'm going to say. When it comes down to rebuilding, when it comes down to um, to starting over, connect yourself with people who can help you do it the right way at the beginning. Connect with people who can help you do it the right way at the beginning. This does not mean that you you know. Um, it, 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 I, I'm just going to leave it there. Connect with people who can help you do it the right way at the beginning. Now, I'm not saying that you, like for me, 
I, I decided for my sweet potato pies, I knew the recipe. I just had to perfect it myself, right? And so in the midst of the process, who did I call? I called my mother because that's who taught me how to, to, to make my pie. So sometimes um, for me in the midst of it, I had to call her and say, okay, Ma, this is what's going Like I made the pies. Everything was good. Um, but while they were cooking, and I was watching, and after a while, and I'm like, dang, like something ain't right. Like I'm, you know. Don't be afraid to connect with people who know what they're doing, who've been there before, who can help you and who can guide. Remember what I said in the very beginning, people who are looking to demolish and rebuild, uh, to renovate or to demolish or, um, or rebuild, the first thing they do is an inspection. And they bring people in, somebody, and a house inspector who can inspect the space, right? who can inspect the space. And so sometimes for you, let me just tell you that sometimes your initial inspector is God. Go to God in prayer and seek God about this thing that you're trying to do before you do it. Because he'll tell you, don't talk to them. He'll tell you, don't go there. He'll tell you, no, that's not really even what I told you to do. Stop moving before your time and trust the ultimate inspector, trust the ultimate man manufacturer, trust the ultimate creator, right? Because to everything there is a season and a time for every purpose. So everything that happens in your life, there is a season to everything. There is a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up. Do not get confused with the timing that you are in in your life. It is a time to rebuild. We are in a season of rebuilding, but understand that there is a process to this. I'm going to pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time and this space, God. We thank you, Lord, for this message. We thank you. I thank you, oh God, for this message. I thank you, oh God, for all of the women who are in a season of rebuilding, who are in a season of breaking down, who are in a season of building up. Um, I thank you, oh God, for just this opportunity to, to come to you, Lord, to say thank you, oh God, for a necessary word that we need to hear as we close this year out, God, as we um, begin to um, reframe and regenerate and recreate some things, as we begin to take put take some things out, you know, and um, throw some things away and demo totally demolish some things. And some of us are deathly afraid, God. Some of us are afraid because this is all that we've known, Jesus. For some of us, this is all that we've known, and you are calling us to recreate this thing, <clears throat> to rebuild this thing. And there's nothing wrong with starting over. You've said it time and time again that there is nothing wrong with starting over. And so, God, I just, I just ask that you would give us um, the courage to start over, that you would give us the courage to look others in the face, um, and even to some extent to walk away from some folks um, who sometimes unintentionally mean us no harm, but just they don't understand the power of words. They don't understand the power of life and death in the tongue. They don't understand that we're real sensitive about our stuff and that we are in a space of like, if one more person says something, something to me, I'm going to quit. And so I'm asking God that you will, God, to would reassure us today. We speak life and we speak courage and we speak, speak bravery. And um, we come against the spirit of doubt. We come against the spirit of fear. We come against the spirit of discouragement. We come against the, the spirit of, um, you know, uh, embracing the fact that we are a failure. Just because we fail doesn't make us a failure. There's nothing wrong with failing. We can fail time and time again so long as we learn the lesson. We can't keep failing and not learning anything from it, God. And some of us keep failing and we keep getting in the same things over and over again and we don't understand why. And so, God, in this time of introspection, during this time of looking ourselves in the face, right, and facing what we want to fix, right, the things that we want to fix, help us to face it with courage. Help us to face ourselves with courage. Help us to take the time to deal with the emotions. Help us to take the time to deal with the things mentally. Help most some of, some of us are on the verge of a mental breakdown because we're trying to do too much. Help us to release the things that we are not supposed to be doing so that we can be available to do only that which you have called us to do. Only that which 
is in alignment with your purpose and plan for our lives. Only that which we are destined to take into 2019, only that which we have been assigned to in this time and this season and in this purpose, oh God. I thank you, Father, that we can boldly say no, that we can boldly walk away, that we can boldly decline. For some of us, we can softly decline and let folks know that that is not a part of where we're going, that that is not in alignment with the assignment that we've been given, that that is not in alignment with the process of rebuilding that we are in. I thank you, God, for this time. I thank you, God, for this message. I thank you, oh God, for the healing that is gonna take place, oh God. For many of us, oh God, we don't like to be broken, oh God, but there is a healing that is, in taking, that is taking place in the process of breaking, that there are some things that you are breaking down that will never be built back up, oh God, that we are building some other things, that we are throwing some things away, and so I thank you, oh God, for what is getting ready to happen in the lives of the visionary Michelle, all the way down to us all across this country, um, all over the world, wherever women in the spotlight women are be, I thank you, oh God, for vision, I thank you for, um, for, for purpose. I thank you, oh God, for consistency. Help us to be consistent. Help us, oh God, not to sway to the right or to the left. Help us to stay consistent. Help us to stay on the road. Help us to stay in the race. Help us to connect with the right people. Help us, oh God, to connect with you first and then others, oh God, who can help us do this thing the right way. Help us, oh God, not to be fearful. Help us to take ego away. Help us not to um, be you know, too egotistical about asking for help. Help us to ask for help, God. Help us to open our mouths, God. Help us to speak life and not continue to speak death on what we can't do and what's not possible and what, what might happen. And then the saying says, what if I fail? But it says, well, what if you fly? God, I thank you, oh God, that we're getting ready to fly. I thank you that we are making preparations to fly. I thank you that we're getting ready to do things that others thought wasn't possible. I thank you, oh God, that you are making ways out of no way. I thank you, God, for opening up the window of heaven and pouring out a blessing that we have no room to receive. I thank you, oh God, that you you are creating, oh God, um, vision, that you are creating, oh God, um, investments, that you are creating, oh God, opportunity, that you're not, there might not have been a door, but you're creating a door. There might not have been a window, but you're creating a window. There may not have been a crack for us to squeeze through, but you're creating it, oh God. I thank you, Father, oh God, for what you are doing, oh God, that in this time of rebuilding, that in this time of doing it again and again, in this time, oh God, of recreating, in this time of regenerating, in this time of refueling and replenishing, oh God. I thank you, oh God, for what you are doing. Help us, oh God, not to run away from the process, oh God. Help us not to run away from the process, oh God. Help us to not to run away from the process. Help us not to run away from the hurt. Help us not to run away from the test, understanding that there is a testimony that will come out of this. Help us to trust in you. Help us to rely on you according to Romans 8 and 28, that all things work together for God, work together for the good of them who love God and are called according to his purpose. All things. We thank you that all things. We thank you that according to 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18, that we will give thanks in all things. We might not like it, but we thank you anyway. We may not like how it feels, but we thank you anyway. We might not like the outcome of it because part of it is we got to take responsibility for our part in it, but we thank you for it anyway. We thank you that it is working for our good. We thank you that it is creating good. We thank you that the outcome at the end of the day is good. It is good. There is nothing you created that was not good. There was nothing you created. When you created it, you looked at it, you liked it, and you said it was good. We have the ability to be able to speak things into existence, that we have the ability to be able to create in our mind and manifest it through our mouths and our hands. I thank you, God. I magnify you, God. I lift your name up, oh God. I speak strength to my sisters right now in the name of Jesus. I speak healing right now to my sisters in the name of Jesus. I speak encouragement right now in the name of Jesus to my sisters. I speak motivation and inspiration. I speak a good push right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, oh God, for what you are doing. I thank you for what you are getting ready to do. And more importantly, I thank you for what you've already done because there isn't anything that you're getting ready to do. It is already done. We just have to walk into it. And so I gratefully, 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 gratefully say thank you, God, for you are honorable and you are magnificent, and you are all powerful, and you are all knowing, and you are all forgiving. And so, Lord, forgive us for any and all sins, oh God, that we may have, have, have committed, oh God. Sins that we knew about, sins that we didn't know about. Cleanse us, creating us a clean heart. Renew a right spirit in us, oh God. Help us to come before you, oh God, with a clean slate, oh God. Anybody that we may have done wrong, oh God, we bring it to the altar, oh God. You cannot forgive us and, and ask us for forgiveness until we have forgiven us 
others. And so God, there are some people in our lives who will never seek forgiveness and never ask for forgiveness and who will never say, I'm sorry. And God, give us the courage to release them. Give us the courage to forgive them. Give us the courage to not be bound by hate and bitterness and anger and resentment. Help us not be to be bound by that. Help us to leave that here in 2018. Help us to leave that here on this specific day. Help us to not take that, oh God, forward. Help us to not take that into 2019. We release any and everybody, oh God, who has hurt us, who has done, who has intentionally done things against us. We release them now in the name of Jesus so that we can move forward. Some of us are weighted by unforgiveness. We are weighted by anger. We believe that we deserve an apology. And God, although we do, we release them to you. We release them to you right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. I thank you, Father, for the release, oh God. I thank you, Father, oh God, for what you are doing. I thank you, oh God, for peace in their homes. I thank you, oh God, in the name of Jesus for favor, oh God. I thank you, oh God, in the name of Jesus for joy, oh God, where the where there is fullness of joy, oh God, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And so I thank you for freedom, oh God, in you. I honor you, God. I magnify you, God. I lift your name up. In Jesus' name, amen. Whew. Conference recording stopped. Whew. Good morning, everybody. I think I needed that morning, y'all did, but <laughs> praise God. Um, y'all be encouraged. Y'all really be encouraged. Stick to the process. Do what God is saying. Do connect with God. Don't do anything without consulting with the ultimate inspector. There are things that he sees that we don't see. And there are places that we want to go that he will. He literally, if you consult with him first, he will say, uh, mm -mm, don't even do it. Mm -mm, nope. And so with that being said, um, if there are any comments, ahas, you can press um, star five or five star, and I can open you up. Um, I really didn't mean to go this long, um, but God is a faithful God, and um, I'm grateful. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Needed this word on today. Awesome. Amen. A good push. Yes. Come on, Jesus. <laughs> Build a firm foundation. I felt this. This is juicy. You said a mouthful. <laughs> when Michelle says hello, you know she. <laughs> yes, it's okay to start over. Exactly. It's a whole process. Okay. Just going back and checking. All right. Let me check the conference call. Okay, so I don't see anything, but again, y'all be encouraged. Um, come back and tag somebody who maybe, you know, you believe like would just be like, listen, I don't even know if it's for you, but it was good and it was a good word. And so um, as we prepare for Christmas, um, let's remember the ultimate reason for the season is even though he wasn't born around this time, this is when we celebrate the birth of Jesus. Um, we celebrate the birth of the ultimate um, um inspector right and so we have power because of the holy spirit right and so because of the death burial and resurrection he went up so that his spirit could come down and so that we could have access to god at any time and so during this time of craziness and presence and all of that kind of stuff be mindful of <clears throat> so you prayed to heaven down this morning i love you oh thank you tasha i love you back um be sure to acknowledge and um and just like just you know remember remember why we celebrate this right because there would be no us there would be no today if god had not loved us enough to send his son right where it says anyone who believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life john 3 16 and so um in the midst of all of that rebuilding thank you lord um do not forget the spiritual aspect of rebuilding some of you need to rebuild your faith some of you, the very first thing that you need to do is rebuild your faith. You need to get into the Bible and you need to start um, reading God's word and allowing God to speak to you through his word. Right. Um, there are some things that you are not going to be able to sustain without a solid spiritual foundation. 
And so I'm not some of, you know, I'm not telling you to go to church right now, but you need to get into a church where you can connect with somebody who is teaching good Bible teaching and can give you what you need and help you navigate this faith walk. Um, because it does get murky and muddy and messy sometimes. And sometimes if the only person who you relying on is you child, listen, you going to you in trouble. And so for some of you, like you need, you need your, your, the very first thing you need to do is, is you need to rebuild your faith walk. You need to build your spiritual life. And let me just tell you that God is waiting for you. You have not messed up too badly for God to, for you to come back to him, for you to can reconnect with him, to rebuild with him. There is nothing that you could ever do that God would say, come unto me, come back to me. And so I want you to know that I want you to <clears throat> I need you to say the same prayer for the new year. <laughs> now, you know, I can't do that. But we come back, do a replay, do a watch party of this. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so, uh, but yeah, I just, um, like, there are just some things that I think, you know, we really need to, like, your faith needs to be solid in this season. I'm going to tell y'all that. Your faith needs to be solid in this season. Um, let me see. Okay, here's Faye. Good morning, Faye. Hey, good morning. Can you hear me? I can hear you, and I'm just going to kind of push you up so that people can hear you. Okay. I just wanted to really thank you um, for the message today. Mm -hmm. It was spot on. I am um, in rebuilding. I've noticed that in our faith law that most churches don't use or, or they don't teach about a dark season. Mm -hmm. And the dark season isn't bad. It's exactly what you talked about when God has to go low to dig to build us to come up. It is very um, desolate. It's lonely, but he's got you. Mm -hmm. And all kinds of crazy happens in that season. But you're right. You have to have your faith because everything will disappear except you and him. Mm -hmm. But it's good. And now I fully understand why Paul said, you know, it's good that I was afflicted. When I first read that, I was not mature enough to receive it. I was like, who would want affliction? Who yeah. would rejoice and be thankful for that? Yeah. But now in my new assignment, um, I'm in a school building. And I, I promise you, every day is a traumatic event mm. that happens and occurs with either a child or staff or parents wow. every single day. And so <laughs> from the teaching that you gave today, it's just a really good reminder about the we. But like you said, where is the responsibility in there? Yeah. And so there's a responsibility in not me just showing up to a job, but being alert enough to realize that everything that was poured into me from the time I was born to this day, I needed it to operate and to withstand what was happening in the building. Yeah. So it's a day-by-day -day process, like you said. I, I promise you, everything you said today, you are in the vein, Detroit. Wow. Um, it's not something you can rush. You yeah. can't rush feeling mm -hmm. your own. Yeah. And you can't rush with other people either. Yeah. And you have to take it moment by moment. Mm -hmm. I used, you know, people say day by day. I just look at them. I'm like, it's second by second. Yeah. You know, and so when we hear a word such as what you delivered today, we can't be so shallow that we dismiss it or take it lightly because really it is a word of what's to come. Mm -hmm. It is a projection. If you're not there today, yeah. it really is... Um, and I don't want to go too deep, but it really is a prophetic word yeah. to say, hey, if you're not living at this address right now, believe you me, you're going to move and you're going to find yourself there in some season in your life. Yeah. It is to come and really prepare now that people are having really a quiet season. Because yeah. in my building, it's a quiet before the storm. You can't even trust the quiet yeah. because you know in about 20 seconds something big is going to happen. Yeah. But the good news is the building, um, like you said, the rebuilding, it's a restoration to it. Mm. But the thing is, the surrender is so great. The rebuilding also requires a surrender. Mm. And the surrender has to be so far removed that you don't even um, 
recognize yourself anymore. Yeah. So I'm I'm very careful about the worship songs that I say now because I'm not being truthful about it. Take me and mold me and make me. Well, if that really happens, yeah. we won't recognize ourselves because we'll be made in a new image. Mm, that's good. So I just believe. That's I just good. have such a thankful heart. I've done your book a few times. I would tell everybody on the line, please get it. Yeah. Because that thankfulness also prepares you for rebuilding. Thank you. Because you don't have anything else but the tools that God will, that he has already created. But yeah. that's all you'll have to use when you come into um, a season where you can't recognize anything. Yeah. Even people you've known for years. My boss, I'll be real quick about this. My boss, I've known for 36 years, and so there's an established relationship, but of course we can't let that out in the building mm-hmm. because pettiness would give a lens to people that they wouldn't be able to handle it. Yeah. So both, if, but hear me when I say I'm on vacation, and even from her, which I know we're established and we're already good, she had made an accusation like, you're, you're coming for me, and I'm like, what in the world is she talking about? Mm-hmm. But see, is the relationship is so great, it's greater than the accusation. Yeah. So I've let the rebuilding happen so much with the breaking. Yeah. But I had to consent to it, too. That's the other thing. Mm. I had to trust God enough in this process that I had to sign, like, a contract, a consent form. You can have your way. Mm. I don't know what that looks like. It's very dark in here, mm. but I already know ahead of me, I'm okay. Wow. So when that test came, I knew, okay, I've already been in the dark. I'm existing in the dark right now. I trust you that you'll still be in Minnesota while I'm in Colorado, and you're going to make that okay, too. Yeah. Like, I don't need to say a word. I don't need to take up for myself. I'm going to even let that pass. Yeah. I only had to jump and take care of myself. I was super defensive. I had to write every wall. I'm too exhausted to do that. Yeah. And God has to just do it. Yeah. And I have to trust him enough that he will. Yeah. And whether she ever says, I don't even expect an apology. Hmm. I am so far past petty and rebuilding will take all that craziness of well, what's going on? Why did she do that? I have done so many mediations in the last month. I'm like, Lord, what is really going on? Yeah. But the thing is, I take no ownership and I feel no type of way. Yeah. It's not good. that I'm numb. It's just that I'm mature now. Yeah. And I've rise above it. Like we're in an airplane. You look at the city and the beauty of the clouds. Anything dark and ugly, you'll even see the beauty in a thunderstorm in an airplane when you're 30,000 feet above ground. Yeah. So all that pettiness, I've left it on the ground, and I've moved on into the rebuilding. And I'm excited to see what's to come, but how many lives will be changed because of a consent to rebuild. I so love I it. thank you for you, your words of you, wisdom today. You're welcome. Well, we are sending love and prayers and covering during this season but you are absolutely welcome i appreciate you Faye. thank you i appreciate you back (laughs) um so um hopefully some of you heard i tried to hold the um the the phone up to the microphone so some of you heard what she said but she said a whole mouthful that i can't even um repeat but it was so good and um um, um, there was one thing that you said was, um, restoration. Um, and then also, um, that you had to co-sign, I think it was, um, and, um, agree to, you know, the, the breaking. And so sometimes when we say, like, we have to be mindful of what we say and how we say, and we say, Lord, make me mold me and recognizing that sometimes as, as, as you are asking God to do that, that and God is making you and molding you, that he's changing the very essence of who you are. And so sometimes when you finally come into who you're supposed to be, it's not who you thought you were. You're totally different. And so I absolutely love all of that. Um, and so I'm reading comments here. Um, Tasha saying, yes, yes, yes. Um, yes, a watch party, whatever we need to do. <laughs> um so yeah, so I'm not gonna hold y'all. Like I told, I literally wanted to be done by eight o'clock, but y'all know I um, just had to give you what I needed to give you in order for you to kind of get your marching orders um, as it related to rebuilding. And so I love y'all. Um, you all have an amazing, amazing, amazing Christmas. Um, we will be back next Friday. 
before the new year. So I won't say happy new year, but be encouraged. Um, come back and read and listen to this again, whether it's on the phone or whether it's in the I Speak Life group or the Women in Spotlight Going Global group. But I really want to encourage you um, to come back and listen. I might even, I, and some of you may or may not know, I do listen to my own stuff. It's like I'll go back. I may not listen, um, like I may not catch a Friday, but like I might catch it on Monday or Tuesday of whoever is, you know, there um, who's speaking. But I even come back and listen to my own stuff because I've learned that like when I'm speaking, sometimes prophetically, like I'm not only talking to y'all, but I'm talking to me too. And so I'd be like, oh, that, that was good, girl. You was talking good to me. <laughs> so at any rate, um, you know, make sure you come back and listen to it again, maybe two or three times, because I know sometimes the second and the third time is better because you'll catch something that you missed the first time. But again, you all be encouraged. You all um, stay steadfast and movable, always abounding um, in the work of the Lord. Um, and just trust that where you are um, is not you not going to stay there. And um, this is just the beginning for some of you, like you are rebuilding um, and you are getting ready and God is getting ready to do some explosive things in your life. And so have an amazing weekend, have an amazing day, have an amazing week, have an amazing Christmas. And, um, I'll see you next Friday. Um, I won't be speaking, but I'll be hosting and I'll see you next Friday for the last Friday prayer of 2018. Bye ladies. I love y'all. See you later.